Canada recently celebrated its 150th anniversary and being good Canucks and all, we wondered what better way to show off our raw patriotism and dedication to the Maple Leaf than some good old fashioned Nook flicks and chill. But watching 4K content on the PC is not as simple as you might think. So when Intel reached out to sponsor a video featuring their seventh generation Nook, we jumped at the opportunity to cover how exactly it works. And it is gonna be such a wild ride that your knuckles are bound to be white by the end of it. Okay, that last one was a bit of a stretch. Stretch like this. The reasons for hooking your TV up to a PC rather than a lower cost HDMI stick like a Chromecast or a streaming box mostly come down to flexibility. You can run whatever software you want, interface seamlessly with storage devices on your network, and even use the media PC itself as a file server for the rest of the household with external storage. So here then is the PC we chose. This isn't the fastest Nook available, but we specifically requested the i5 variant for a few reasons. At under $400, we like its balance of features, performance, and cost. The i5 Nook is quite a bit shorter and more compact, and its lower power consumption, partly thanks to offloading video decoding to the onboard GPU and noise, will make for a better home theater experience. We configured it in about 20 minutes with a 128 gig Intel 600p series SSD, two sticks of crucial DDR4 memory, and a fresh copy of Windows 10. Now, when we first did our proof of concept testing for this video, we turned to our tried and tested LG UD88 4K monitors. Unfortunately, while they support HDCP 2.2, we ran into some handshaking issues. But it just wouldn't be a video on Ultra HD without a problem with DRM, would it? Thankfully, our bros over at LG hooked us up with a much more recent, not to mention bigger screen to play with. The LG OLED 65B6P, an enormous 65 inch Ultra HD premium certified OLED TV with the now familiar and awesome WebOS interface and gyroscopic remote. As usual, my message here is the same. OLED, have I mentioned OLED yet? With its unbelievable contrast is the future, and I'm actually really glad that we're using this for our UHD testing instead. So with the hardware out of the way, let's get into our first method of 4K content consumption, local playback of normal computer files. While there isn't much legitimately out there at the moment, we can handle both freely available test files and any consumer 4K video capture, thanks to everybody's favorite flexible media player, VLC. Number two, everybody's favorite free streaming site YouTube first demoed 4K playback in 2014, and that was without requiring any elaborate hardware-based DRM, more on that in a moment, and they added HDR10 support in late 2016. Though, it should be noted that very little HDR content is available at this time. Our CPU usage on our Nook stayed at between 5 and 10% thanks to that GPU decoding that I mentioned earlier. Number three. All right, so this box has full support for the controversial software guard extensions for playback 3.0 DRM that's been spearheaded by the content production industry, which lets us access then streaming services like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video at full UHD 4K quality. As long as we're using Windows 10's Edge browser, though it should be noted that the native Netflix app also supports UHD playback. Number four, there are also digital stores like Sony Pictures' store and uh, soon Microsoft's Windows Store and Film and TV app, both of which, if you have 
the DRM compliance built into your PC will support 4K videos. But none of the stuff I've mentioned is especially new, and all of it is either limited in terms of content availability or in terms of sound and image quality. So what about method number five? I promised five. Playing back UHD Blu-rays. That option was conspicuously absent for months after the launch of 4K Blu-ray. And there is a significant and very noticeable difference in quality between an internet stream running at about six megabytes per second versus a disk bit rate, which can nearly triple that. That is where our shiny new Pioneer BDR211UBK comes in. Imported straight from the land of the rising sun, it's the world's first and at this time only Ultra HD compatible PC Blu-ray drive. And given the decline in physical media use in modern computers, it's likely to retain its title for some time. With support for almost literally every major disc-based format, short of like, Laserdisc. And this, along with a five and a quarter inch enclosure, is the pièce de la résistance of our 4K playback PC. It actually worked far more painlessly than you'd expect. But like our UHD streaming services, it doesn't work without hardware support and a software install for the Software Guard Extensions DRM. So then, we are now able to consume virtually any content that we can go to a store or online and buy, as long as it's movies. So can we game on this thing? I mean, there is a Thunderbolt 3 port on there. So this being Linus Tech Tips, of course, we grabbed a Razer Core, slapped in a GTX 1080 Ti, and plugged it in to see what it would do. The answer, well, from my experience, the much higher clocked Core i7 variants of Intel's mobile chips are quite a bit more potent for this use case. The good news though, is that Steam's in-home streaming is a thing if you really want to have a gaming PC experience on the couch with the i5 and you have another gaming PC elsewhere on your network. Our 4K 60 FPS gaming stream ran perfectly over a standard gigabit wired network connection. So in summary then, we'd basically been looking for an excuse to buy one of these new Blu-ray drives and test UHD compatibility on the latest PCs with the hardware DRM support. And hopefully seeing it all pretty much working outside of some question marks with respect to monitor HDCP compatibility was as interesting for you guys as it was for us. So thanks for watching guys. If this video sucked, you know what to do, but if it was awesome, get subscribed, hit that like button or check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.